to the Holy Spirit, amen, our keeper, amen, and to the pastor of this church, our pastor, Ella Ray Sledge, and to First Lady, this is missionary, this is uh, Sledge, amen, to Ella Brown, amen, and to Minister Bird and their companions, amen, and, and to all the First Ladies, missionaries, and everybody in the house of the Lord today, amen, I truly count it a blessing to be before you all. Once again, amen. Glory be to God. I won't be before you all long. If thus says the Lord, amen. Amen. I'm leaning and depending on him. Amen. To bring forth this word, amen. Amen. And our scriptures will be coming out of Ephesians. Amen. There's a couple of scriptures we're going to go through. Amen. But... I'm going to go to my topic, amen, before I go into the scriptures, amen. And the topic is the new you and the removal of your old garments. The new you and the removal of your old garments, amen. Amen. From the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, the third verse. And it reads, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. See, when we, when we surrender to God, when we accept Jesus Christ in our life, amen, then will our heavenly blessings begin to rain upon us, amen. I know we say a lot of times, there's a blessing in heaven with my name on it, and we all got a blessing in heaven with our name on it, amen. But it's until that we receive Christ as our Savior, and still surrender to God, Will God descend those blessings down upon us? Amen. And I want to go to Ephesians chapter 2 and the very first verse. And it reads, And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. How many know who was all dead? Yeah. Before Christ came in our life, we were just dead men walking, as they say, or dead people walking, as they say, until Christ came into our life, until we surrendered and let Christ in our life. We were just, we were dead. There was no way for us, amen. We, we, we were lost. 
So until we accept Christ in our life, amen, then we begin to have life. Amen. And now we're going to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, amen. And this is where the old garments, the removal of the old garments come in, amen. It started at the 25th verse, Ephesians 4 and 25. And it says, now since it, and I'm, pretty, I'm paraphrasing, since we are saved in Christ, since Christ has came into our life, since we have accepted him as our personal Savior, since now is wherefore putting away all lying, speak every man the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor working with his hands and the things which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corruptive communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of the edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And this is what I like, this is the last 30 second verse. And be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, Forgiving one another, even as Christ, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers and doers of his words. Amen. Amen. As I was saying, before we accepted Christ in our life, amen, that we were lost, amen, and, 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 and we was on a path of destruction. But when God touched our mind and touched our hearts and touched our spirit and gave us the mind to want to live upright and, and, and live by his word, then is when the removal of the old garments began to take place. When we accept God in our life, it, it, we have to let him do the removing of the old garments. We can try to remove our, ourselves, but removing them ourselves is just get us in a whole bunch of mess sometimes. Amen. 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 Some of the garments come off easy. You can take them off. I always see Pastor, he, he always come out of his coat and he always say, take his coat off. It's just like the it's just like the the the, the old you put yourself over there, but it's always over there. Right. Amen. Some of us, before Christ came into our life, was liars, stealers, cheaters. We, 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 we was all had habits, bad habits that, that needed to be removed. Before we, we proceeded this walk in Christ, amen. And then I was saying, so many garments are, are easily removed, amen. They just fall off easy. And just, when God saves you, you just want to stop doing them. And you just say, I'm through with it. But some of those garments have a tendency to want to stick on tight. Some of those garments just, you just, they, they just like, you can't break it hard to, to remove those garments. And you're praying to God and you're saying, God, I, I'm praying about this, this, this habit or, this, or this, this garment that I got on. And it's hard to shake and I can't. Like I said, when we, when some of them just come on just easy, we just soon God save us. God say, I'm going to remove that from you. I'm going to take that from you. I'm going to take that line. I'm going to take that, that, that cheating. I'm going to take that drinking. I'm going to take that smoking. Some of those have God just removed, but some of them, he let it linger on us. He let it linger on us and he let us see how long we go depending on him to remove that garment. See, in the midst of all that, that, that removal process, we got to still lean and depend on God through it all. Yeah. See, some of my garments came off easy, but I had something that I had to struggle with. Right. 
and I had to play with God. I said, God, I know that I'm trying my hardest to break it. I'm trying. And that's how we got to be. We cannot give up. See, the enemy will come in and say, hey, you, you, you still like to do this, so you might as well just give up and go back to doing what you were doing. Because you can't shake it. You can't break it. You can't stop doing what you were doing. The enemy is going to be on his job. He's going to come in and in and give you the negative mind and say, man, you might as well go back doing what you were doing because you still haven't broke this. You still can't get this going out. Jesus. But how many know if you wait on God? If you wait on God, it will eventually remove this sin. But God wants to see sometimes how long are we going to stay in this struggle? How long are we going to stay in this fight and wait on Him to, wait, to remove it from us? It's about waiting. God said, long suffering builds patience. See, a lot of times, if we move everything so fast, we'll be so happy in the end. When something hits us, we'll be just, man, I, you mess us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we struggle, we strive, and we know we're trying to live the life that God has called us to live, and we know that, that God, you called me, but I can't shake this. God is building you up to endure some things you're going to have to go through on this journey that you are in with him. It's all about waiting on God. Right. Waiting on God. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it seems like it's so hard. Sometimes it's like we can't bear to, to wait on God. We, we think that because we get saved that everything is removed right then. Right. Right. That everything, once you give your life to God, that everything that you were doing is just going to gonna just move away. Yeah. Yeah. But not so. And don't let the enemy trick you into thinking that you, when you give your life to God, that everything that is going to remove from you. Like, does the enemy want to say, once you give your life to God, everything, if you're still doing that, then you might have gone back to what you were doing. The enemy want to give you that negative mind thought that, 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 that God ain't really with you. He saved you, but, but look what he's doing to you. Look what he's leaving on you. You're still doing it. You're still doing it for God. I had to pray and I had to fast. Sometimes you have to fast. Jesus told his disciples, these kind of kinds come out by fasting and praying. Some of the garments they don't come out until the fasting and praying starts. Until the fasting and praying, you get in the, in the, in the your closet, you begin to tell God, God, I know you haven't left me. I know you haven't forsaken me. God, I know you still there with me. But God, I feel. We got to just trust and believe in God. In the midst of that habit, whatever it is, it seems so hard to break. You gotta continue to trust in God and tell God to move that thing out of my way. Go to the throne with boldness. Go before his throne with boldness and say, God, I'm a child of yours now. And this thing that's on me has been on me for too long. And I've been running this race, God. Now I want you to remove this garment from me. See, you gotta know who you are in Christ. to Christ. We got to know who we are. We're more than a conqueror. There's no battle that can come our way that we can't get past. If we know who we are in Christ. To the newly saved, thank God. I thank God for the one that has given their life to God. I thank God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Amen. But you wait on God to take those things from you that are hidden. Don't give up on God, but wait on God to deliver you. He will, he's going to deliver you, but only in his own time. It's not in our time that God will deliver us, but in his own time. Thank you, Jesus. I, I had a smoking habit that was hard to break. And I remember telling God, God, you got to take it from me. I can't quit it myself. You got to take it from me. And I remember when he delivered me. Like it 
was yesterday. I was on my job. I was at work by myself. My coworker was gone to lunch. I was washing a truck. I was cleaning the truck off. I was washing the detail of the truck. And when I climbed into the back of the truck and began to wash the top of the truck off, I heard a brother man say, now you deliver.
of running in that same old race or that in that, that race where the end is destruction. And God is calling. For he said he was for none to perish, but all to come to repentance. God loves you. He loves the sinner, but he don't love the sinner ways, but he loves the sinner. And he desires for you to let him in your life. He desires for you to surrender to him so he can show you how great of a God he really is. Jesus Christ has made the way. He made the way. All we got to do is take the way. Glory. Not one. It's the tired of living the way I was living. Glory. But it might be one to say, I got a garment that needs to be removed. That I've been struggling with. That, that, that has just been on me. And it's tough and I need I need God to help me. I need God to, to, to step in and, and, and remove this garment from me. Thank God I guess all our garments are removed. I guess everybody in here is just where they need to be in God. I thank God for that if you are. Saying that you're walking this walk with Christ, and there's nothing in your life that you think you need to change, or there's nothing in your life that you think God needs to remove or to help you with. We all need help along this way, but we gotta have the mind to come willingly and knowingly. God said, an honest confession. We gotta be honest with ourselves. It's not for nobody else to judge you or, or nothing, but you examine yourself and, 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 and be honest with yourself and say, God, I need something I need to work on. I need something I need to remove in myself that I need you to remove from me. I got this habit of, of, of getting angry. I got this habit of, of this. Whatever the habit is that is hindering you from going further in the Lord. 